10 to 9. And here's a question. We've got some vintage footage for you of a young performer before he became a singer-songwriter with a hit uh, album and a track that's been streamed a billion times. A billion, yeah, a billion times. He's about to join us. Do you know who this is? that little boy entertaining his classmates at primary school. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Where's your cap? <laughs> yeah, your little I, sweatshirt. Yeah, it's, it's once a show off, always a show off. <laughs> <laughs> so how long would that have been? OK, that would have been... Oh, God. Decades. <laughs> Decades. Because you're, what, 31 now? Yeah. So you're, what, there, like six or seven or something? Yeah, I reckon. Maybe, maybe a bit younger. I remember, I remember singing that song. Cockles and mussels. That's you Tom do. O'Dell's new single, <laughs> Cockles and Mussels. Streamed a billion times. <laughs> <you know. laughs> oh, my goodness. So, I mean, even then, did you know you were going to sing? Um, no, I mean, I was, I was always, as I said, I was probably always a bit of a show off, but um, I, um, I didn't really know any musicians. I came from Chichester and I, like the only musicians I knew was my piano teacher. And so the thought of it, becoming like a viable career path was just, you know, it wasn't until I was about 15 or 16, started taking it seriously. But it was always a dream, always a dream. I always, like, used to dream of being on stage and I used to watch. Who did you want to be? Um, who I? I was very obsessed, well, I was really obsessed with, like, the 70s stars, like Elton John, David Bowie. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I was, like, the first generation that grew up with the internet. So, like, I used to just download so much music and it didn't really matter to me what era it was from. It didn't matter whether it was from today or yesterday. And I was really drawn to the 70s because they were great songs. And um, yeah, I was just obsessed. I was, you know, and I can't, I still quite, can't quite believe that I actually do it as a job. I always think maybe I'm going to wake up tomorrow and you know, maybe it's all going to go away, but... But it's uh, been, what, 10 years now? Yeah, it's 10 since, years. Since, yeah. yeah, I'm incredibly grateful. I, I, honestly, I don't take it for granted. I absolutely love it, and I love what it's brought me, all the people I get to meet, and all the uh, silly music videos I get to make. <laughs> <laughs> but this is another love. This is the billion streams. Yeah, yeah. It's a billion and one now. Should we listen to yeah. it? And this is from your new album, is that right? That's right, that's in my studio, yeah. And that's where we recorded the album, which came out on Friday. And um, I started making it about a year ago. And I challenged myself, you know, I've played the piano since I was seven years old, or six years old. And I've always wanted to make just a piano vocal record. And I set myself the challenge of not using any other instruments, which, you know, the technology we have today is like, you can use, you can have strings, you can have any drums, any sample. And so it was really hard to not like add a bass, add a drum kit to it. But it was really challenging, really um, satisfying to make. And I'm, I'm really proud of this album. I like, it's, I don't know, it's just like, it's, it was such a joy to make from start to finish. And um, it's been great playing the songs live this year across all the shows and stuff, but, yeah. And is that because it feels more simple to you now? The music or...? Yeah, because that you have that discipline of not adding anything else in. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I think, like, it's... I've got, you know, I've got to a certain point where I've been doing it, where I feel like I've got a bit better at it, like... Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is... Because um, I've been doing so many shows and playing the piano and singing and... I don't think I could have done this 10 years ago. Um, but yeah. But yeah, I'm really proud of it. Yeah. I wonder what that piano teacher in Chichester thinks. Well, I had a few. Oh, really? I had a few. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm in I, vaguely in touch with, with, with one, Ed Hawkins, who was an um, amazing, amazing guy. He really inspired me. Because he was the guy that said to me, um, I, you know, every piano teacher I'd had were, was always like, you know, you must play scales and. Bach and Mozart, and I was like, it's so boring. And he was the first guy that said to me, you know, you can enjoy this. It can be, you can do this for enjoyment. It doesn't have to be a sort of just discipline. Um, so, um, 
And that's something I do think is missing so from amazing, like initial music music education is like is we tend to concentrate on the rigor and the sort of technical side, but really it's just pure enjoyment for me whenever I sit at the piano and I've never really seen it any other way. It should just be a place of refuge rather than, you know, sort of um ruler on the back of the hand or like that. an hour of scales every night yeah maybe never... let's not be doing that yeah but that's probably why i'm a rubbish piano player <laughs> <laughs> that's why you got through so many piano teachers maybe. yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Um, you parted ways with your record company didn't you that's correct yeah um, why did you do that and how, what's life like for you now in a more uh, you more independent M much more independent yeah um i mean um yeah, it's been it's been so wonderful this year um, being an independent artist. I think in this, you know, like from when I got into the industry, it's changed a lot. You know, I have this wonderful like phone. I mean, I don't have it in my pocket right now in case it goes off, but um, <laughs> where I can just talk to my fans and talk to the people that follow my music directly. And a lot of those filters and those gatekeepers that were there at the beginning of my career, they, they aren't there anymore. And it's it's um, you know, with streaming, there's things that we need to fix with streaming, but there's also this wonderful thing it's done to music. It's democratised it. And, ne you know, never has there been a time where sort of pop music is so diverse and there's so much... I get so excited every Friday to listen to what everyone's going to put out. I mean, music's in such a great place, I think. When I got into it, there's a lot of, like, EDM and dance music, and I was like, <laughs> oh, I hated it. <laughs> But there still is, isn't there? I mean, there's room for everybody. Yeah. There's room yeah. for everybody. That, 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 that's the point, is like, I think, you know, you've got people like Rosalia and Billie Eilish putting out just like really progressive, like, music. And it's cool, yeah. Tom, thank you very much indeed. Thanks Lovely so to see much. you. Thanks for coming in. Sorry about the, uh, the school video. But, yeah. uh, yeah, <laughs> Apologies. Be, Apologies for that. Uh, Tom's new album is called Best Day of My Life. You're watching BBC Breakfast. It is 8.59.